If people don't notice your cover or don't connect with it, the author of the book next to yours will be very grateful. David Lanehart. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hole. And I'm Lee Esses. Happy March. This month, we are going to be talking about common writing myths. Myths that new writers often believe because they've heard it over and over again, and they think that that's what they have to stick to. But most of the time, it creates more problems. It can stunt their writing. So we're going to be trying to shatter those myths throughout the month. One of those phrases is, don't judge a book by its cover. Like our opener said, if you don't pay attention to your cover, no one else will either, and the other authors will very much appreciate it. When it comes to judging a book by the cover, that is wonderful, great, philosophical advice about not judging people by the way that they look. But it is philosophical entirely. The saying should be, don't judge people by how they look. But because, you know, humans, we like metaphors, we had to come up with some clever way to say it that has caused confusion in the writing world. Please, judge a book by its cover. Absolutely. Say these words. Talking about actual books, cover designers will hate you. Speaking of cover design, we have covered cover design in the past a couple of times. So you can go to season two, where we had an entire episode talking about how to design a cover. And then again, when we talked about genres, we talked about specific covers for each genre. So if this is the first time you've listened to us, there are some other great resources to continue looking at how to design your cover. But today's episode is more about why the covers are important. Why we should stop telling people to stop judging a book by its cover because it just leads authors to not caring about their covers. If you look at how the big boys do it, how the top of the line, number one, everyone's favorite author, authors do it. They put a lot of time and a lot of money into their covers. This is where you have authors, especially in the fantasy and sci-fi realm, commissioning artists to paint or draw or create wonderful artistry for their covers. One of the latest books that I started reading and didn't finish reading, I was sold on buying the book for like, 25 30 bucks because of the cover itself. Something on the cover told me to buy the book. They got my money, their mission is accomplished. If you look at any series in their branding, you'll see the same motifs, the same colors or styles that cross each one so you can clearly see this is part of the same series. I have a theory that this is one reason why Twilight did so well, because despite the terrible content of the books, the covers were very eye-catching. They followed that 30-60-10 rule very well. One of the best ways to sell your book is to write a sequel for it. But if people don't know that it's a sequel, then they aren't going to go back and purchase book one. They won't know that it's part of a series then you have issues getting more than one book purchased by one person. Now, this doesn't mean that your covers need to look the exact same. I've seen this so many times on forums where somebody will post, hey, here, look, there's my series, and it's the same exact cover across the entire series, and all the difference is is it says book one, book two, book three. That's not selling your book because people don't, don't see that minute difference soon enough to realize these are three different books in the same series. This is exactly when people do judge a book by its cover. Have you ever seen a movie because you really like the trailer and then the trailer had nothing to do with the movie whatsoever? Yes, and I hate it so much. Your cover is like that movie trailer. Movie trailers exist to tease to show the best parts of a movie without giving the whole thing away. That's what you want to do on your cover. Show what's relevant, what's eye-catching, what's going to draw people in without giving away the whole plot and without making it entirely too specific. For example, when I did a presentation about cover design, 
I used an example from a Tamara Pierce book and showed three different versions of the same book with different covers. All had been released that way. And one of them showed a very, very specific scene in a book that those who haven't read the book wouldn't understand why this kid is on the front cover with a black eye holding a random animal. It just didn't make sense for the cover. So it was entirely too specific to actually draw attention. Of course, before designing your cover, understanding who your target audience is, what your genre is, and then knowing the fads in your genre are important. Your cover being a movie trailer, it should be attracting your target audience. So a movie trailer with a bunch of magic and superheroes and fighting is not going to attract somebody whose preference in movies is a rom-com. So your book that is about magic and fighting and excitement should not look like a rom-com. Well, they fall in love halfway through the book. But that's not the main plot. (laughs) Also, if you don't have design experience, I highly recommend having someone else do the cover for you who does have that experience. And make sure they're familiar with your genre and your target audience so they can play to what your audience wants in a cover, what they will be attracted to. If they don't ask you, what's your genre, what's your target audience, then they probably aren't the best designer for you. Another thing, I believe we spoke about it, but I don't think it made the final cut on the season two episode talking about book covers is the blurbs on the back of the book. This is the movie theater voice saying, in a world where peanut butter tastes like popcorn, whatever it is. So the cover is what catches their eye and gets them to pick up the book. The blurb on the back gets them to want to open it and read it and purchase it. Be careful, no spoilers. If it doesn't happen in chapter one, then maybe just set the scene. Give people an idea of the flavor of the villain or the problem, whatever it is your characters are facing, and possibly the series if it's part of a series. The blurb is not a summary, it's a tease. It's the trailer that draws attention without giving everything away. One of the things you can do to figure out possibly what your audience will be looking for is you can look at the Amazon top 10 list of books being sold in that genre right now. See what those trends are and mimic them. Don't obviously steal, but if they're using big loopy fonts and then red and white and tan for their romance book, maybe you should consider doing it for yours. Because if you do black and purple and green with sort of an etched handwriting font, you're not going to do as well in the romance genre. Speaking of trends, there are a few trends that both of us wish would just go away. There are sometimes places for it, but not usually. One of the ones that I see that drives me up the wall is a novel on the front of the cover. Yeah. If you do the right cover design, it will be clear that it's not a nonfiction book. It will be clear that it is a fictional novel based on the size of the book and the cover. You don't need to tell people that that's what it is. Now, if by some chance you are adapting something else and making it a novel, maybe. For example, the Night Vale podcast, when they created a book out of some of the stories that were told in this podcast, they wrote a novel on there. Because yes, it's not the podcast. It is a novelized version of Welcome to Night Vale. Another thing that you might see on the cover is reviews about the book, which I am almost okay with if it's on the back. I'm okay with a one-line review from New York bestseller list, whatever, and then like the sigil of the series and then the blurb. That's as close as I get to wanting reviews on the book. I don't like seeing reviews on the front. It takes away from the beauty of the design. I really don't like when blurbs are entirely replaced by reviews because I still want to know what the book is about. And having some random person from some small newspaper in Chicago say, 
it was amazing, is not going to get me to pick up the book. I've noticed in the mystery suspense genre, sometimes you'll see a black and white, often taken in like the early 90s, photo of the author, and that's it. I don't know why, but okay. These are trends that you might see and that you might consider avoiding for the reasons listed. But in everything, figure out what you like about certain covers and what annoys you about other covers. If you want help with this, feel free to reach out to us. Both of us take a lot of time to become familiar with genres, what is good in those genres, and we can help point you to the right directions, give you some examples of things that you might be able to emulate when you create your own. Because we want your book to catch attention. We want you guys to succeed as authors if that's what you want to do. But all of the work you put into the cover doesn't mean anything if you don't write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. <laughs>